Herman Cain was an American businessman, an activist for the Tea Party movement within the Republican Party. Born in Memphis, Tennessee, Cain grew up in Georgia and graduated from Morehouse College with a bachelor's degree in mathematics. He then earned a master's degree in computer science at Purdue University while also working full-time for the U.S. Department of the Navy. In 1977, he joined the Pillsbury Company where he later became vice president. During the 1980s, Kane's success as a business executive at Burger King prompted Pillsbury to appoint him as chairman and CEO of Godfather's Pizza, in which capacity he served from 1986 to 1996. Kane was chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City Omaha branch from 1989 to 1991. He was deputy chairman, from 1992 to 1994, and then chairman until 1996, of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. In 1995, he was appointed to the Kemp Commission and, in 1996, he served as a senior economic advisor to Bob Dole's presidential campaign. From 1996 to 1999, Kane served as president and CEO of the National Restaurant Association. In May 2011, Kane announced his 2012 presidential candidacy. By the fall, his proposed 999 tax plan and debating performances had made him a serious contender for the Republican nomination. In November, however, his campaign faced allegations of sexual misconduct, which he denied. He announced the suspension of his campaign on December 3, but remained involved in politics. In the 2020 election cycle, Kane was a co-chairman of Black Voices for Trump. Kane died from COVID-19 on July 30, 2020, at the age of 74. Chapter 1, Early Life Herman Kane was born on December 13, 1945, in Memphis, Tennessee, to Lenora Davis Kane, a cleaning woman and domestic worker, and Luther Kane, who was raised on a farm and worked as a barber and janitor, as well as a chauffeur for Robert W. Woodruff, the president of the Coca-Cola Company. Kane said that as he was growing up, his family was poor but happy. Kane related that his mother taught him about her belief that success was not a function of what you start out with materially, but what you start out with spiritually. His father worked three jobs to own his own home, which he achieved during Kane's childhood, and to allow his two sons to attend college. Kane grew up on the west side of Atlanta, attending S. H. Archer High School and the Reverend Cameron M. Alexander's Antioch Baptist Church North in the neighborhood now known as the Bluff. Eventually the family moved to a modest brick home on Albert Street in the Collier Heights neighborhood. He graduated from high school in 1963. Chapter 2, Education and Career In 1967, Kane graduated from Morehouse College with a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. In 1971, he received a Master of Science in Computer Science from Purdue University, while working full-time as a ballistics analyst for the U.S. Department of the Navy as a civilian. After completing his master's degree from Purdue, Kane left the Department of the Navy and began working for Coca-Cola in Atlanta as a computer systems analyst. In 1977, he moved to Minneapolis to join Pillsbury, becoming director of business analysis in its restaurant and foods group in 1978. Chapter 2 Section 1, Burger King and Godfather's Pizza At age 36, Kane was assigned to analyze and manage 400 Burger King stores in the Philadelphia area. At the time, Burger King was a Pillsbury subsidiary. Under Kane, his region posted strong improvement in three years. According to a 1987 account in the Minneapolis Star Tribune, Pillsbury's then-president Wynne Vullin said, he was an excellent bet. Herman always seemed to have his act together. At Burger King, Kane established the Beamer program, which taught our employees, mostly teenagers, how to make our patrons smile by smiling themselves. It was a success, within three months of the program's initiation, the sales trend was moving steadily higher. Kane's success at Burger King prompted Pillsbury to appoint him president and CEO of another subsidiary, Godfather's Pizza. On his arrival on April 1, 1986, Kane told employees, 
I'm Herman Cain and this ain't no April Fool's joke. We are not dead. Our objective is to prove to Pillsbury and everyone else that we will survive. Godfather's Pizza was performing poorly, having slipped in ranks of pizza chains from 3rd in 1985 to 5th in 1988. Under Cain's leadership, Godfather's closed approximately 200 restaurants and eliminated several thousand jobs, and by doing so returned to profitability. In a leveraged buyout in 1988, Cain, Executive Vice President and CEO Ronald B. Gartlin, and a group of investors bought Godfather's from Pillsbury. Chapter 2 Section 2, Federal Reserve Bank and National Restaurant Association Kane served as chairman of the board of the Omaha branch of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City from January 1, 1989, to December 31, 1991. He became a member of the board of directors of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City in 1992. He served as deputy chairman from January 1, 1992, to December 31, 1994, and then as its chairman until August 19, 1996, when he re-signed to become active in national politics. Kane left Godfather's Pizza in 1996 and moved to the District of Columbia. From 1996 to 1999 he served as CEO of the National Restaurant Association, a trade group and lobbying organization for the restaurant industry, on whose board of directors he had previously served. Kane's lobbying work for the association led to a number of connections to Republican lawmakers and politicians. Under Kane's leadership, the association lobbied against increases to the minimum wage, mandatory health care benefits, regulations against smoking, and lowering the blood alcohol limit that determines whether one is driving under the influence. Kane was on the board of directors of Aquila Incorporated, Nabisco, Whirlpool, Reader's Digest, and Agco Incorporated. After Kane's term with the restaurant advocacy group ended in 1999, he returned to Omaha for about a year, then moved to his hometown of Atlanta in 2000. Chapter 2 Section 3 Media Work Kane wrote a syndicated op-ed column, which was distributed by the North Star Writers Group. Kane appeared in the 2009 documentary An Inconvenient Tax. From 2008 to February 2011, Kane hosted the Herman Kane Show on Atlanta Talk Radio Station WSB. On January 19, 2012, Kane began working for WSB again by providing daily commentaries while occasionally filling in for Eric Erickson and Neil Bortz. On October 1, 2012, Kane began writing weekly online columns for the media organization Newsmax, in a series titled 999 to Save America. Kane took over Bortz's radio talk show on January 21, 2013, upon Bortz's retirement. The show was dropped from the Westwood One radio network in December 2016 in favor of the Chris Plant show, but continued to air in limited syndication through WSB's owner, Cox Radio. On February 15, 2013, Fox News Channel announced Kane would join the network as a contributor. In March 2019, Kane was a panelist on a Waters World episode. Chapter 2 Section 4 Recognition Kane received the 1996 Horatio Alger Award and was bestowed with honorary degrees from Creighton University. Johnson, and Wales University, Morehouse College, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, the New York City College of Technology, Purdue University, Suffolk University, and Tougaloo College. Then former Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Jack Kemp, referred to Kane as the Colin Powell of American capitalism. Kemp stated that Kane's conquests won't be counted in terms of countries liberated or lives saved, but in those things that make life worth living expanding opportunity, creating jobs and broadening horizons, not just for those he knows, but through his example, for those he'll never meet. Chapter 2 Section 5, Possible Nomination to the Federal Reserve Board On April 4, 2019, President Donald Trump said that he intended to nominate Kane to the second of the two vacant seats on the Federal Reserve Board. Assessing the possible nomination, News publications reviewed Kane's sexual misconduct allegations that preceded his withdrawal from the 2012 presidential election. Kane acknowledged 
that the nomination process would be more cumbersome for him due to his unusual career. He initially stated that he was not considering withdrawing his name from consideration for the seat. After it appeared likely that he would not receive enough votes to support his confirmation, Kane withdrew on April 22, 2019. Chapter 2 Section 6 – Black Voices for Trump In the 2020 election cycle, Cain was a co-chairman of Black Voices for Trump. Chapter 3 – Political Activities Chapter 3 Section 1 – Role in the Defeat of 1993 Clinton Health Care Plan In 1994, as president-elect of the National Restaurant Association, Cain challenged President Bill Clinton on the costs of the employer mandate contained within the Health Security Act and criticized the effect on small businesses. Bob Cohen of Newsweek described Cain as one of the primary opponents of the plan, the Clintons would later blame Harry and Louise, the fictional couple in the ads aired by the insurance industry, for undermining health reform. But the real saboteurs are named Herman and John. Herman Cain is the president of Godfather's Pizza and president-elect of the National Restaurant Association. An articulate entrepreneur, Cain transformed the debate when he challenged Clinton at a town meeting in Kansas City, Missouri. Cain asked the president what he was supposed to say to the workers he would have to lay off because of the cost of the employer mandate. Clinton responded that there would be plenty of subsidies for small businessmen, but Cain persisted. Quite honestly, your calculation is inaccurate, he told the president. In the competitive marketplace it simply doesn't work that way. Because Kemp was impressed with Kane's performance, he chartered a plane to Nebraska to meet Kane after the debate. As a result, Kane was appointed to the Kemp Commission in 1995. Joshua Green of The Atlantic called Kane's exchange with President Clinton his auspicious debut on the national political stage. Chapter 3 Section 2 Senior Advisor to 1996 Dole Campaign Cain was a senior economic advisor to the Bob Dole presidential campaign in 1996. Chapter 3 Section 3 2000 Presidential Campaign Cain briefly ran for the Republican presidential nomination in 2000. He later said in looking back at the effort that it was more about making political statements than winning the nomination. George W. Bush was the chosen one, he had the campaign DNA that followers look for. However, Cain went on to state, I believe that I had a better message, and I believe that I was the better messenger. After ending his own campaign, however, he endorsed Steve Forbes. Chapter 3 Section 4 2004 U.S. Senate Campaign In 2004 Cain ran for the U.S. Senate in Georgia, and did not win in the primaries. He was pursuing the seat that came open with the retirement of Democrat Zell Miller. Cain sought the Republican nomination, facing Congressman Johnny Isaacson and Mac Collins in the primary. Collins tried to paint Cain as a moderate, citing Cain's support for affirmative action programs, while Cain argued that he was a conservative, noting that he opposed the legality of abortion except when the mother's life is threatened. Cain finished second in the primary with 26.2% of the vote, ahead of Collins, who won 20.6%, but because Isaacson won 53.2% of the vote, Isaacson was able to avoid a runoff. Chapter 3 Section 5 Americans for Prosperity and America's PAC. Starting in 2005, Cain worked for the political advocacy group Americans for Prosperity alongside Mark Bloch. Bloch would later become campaign manager for Cain's 2012 presidential run and would be joined in Cain's campaign by several other AFP employees. Cain continued to receive honoraria for speaking at AFP events until he announced his campaign for the Republican nomination. Cain's senior economic advisor during his 2012 presidential campaign, Rich Lowry, who helped devise Cain's 999 tax plan, had served on the AFP board. In 2006, Cain voiced several radio ads encouraging people of color to vote Republican, the ads were funded by a group called America's PAC and its founder J. Patrick Rooney. Chapter 3 Section 6, 
2012 presidential campaign. A Tea Party activist, Kane addressed numerous Tea Party rallies in 2010. Following the 2010 midterm elections, Kane announced his intentions to run for president in December 2010, stating that there was a 70% chance that he would attempt to seek the office. Later that month, he was the surprise choice for 2012 GOP nominee in a redstate.com reader poll. Kane announced the formation of an exploratory committee on January 12, 2011, before formally announcing his candidacy on May 21 in Atlanta. Chapter 3 Section 6 Subsection 2 Straw Poll Victories Kane's addresses to conservative groups were well received, and in late September and early October 2011, Kane won the straw polls of the Florida Republican Party TCON, and the National Federation of Republican Women's Convention. My focus groups have consistently picked Herman Kane as the most likable candidate in the debates, said GOP pollster Frank Luntz. Don't underestimate the power of likability, even in a Republican primary. The more likable the candidate, the greater the electoral potential. Chapter 3 Section 6 Subsection 3999 Plan In July 2011, an advisor suggested that his campaign's tax policy plan be called the Optimal Tax, but Kane rejected the name, saying we're just going to call it what it is, 999 Plan. The plan would have replaced the then-current tax code with a 9% business transactions tax, a 9% personal income tax, and a 9% federal sales tax. During a debate on October 12, Kane said his plan expands the base, arguing that when you expand the base, we can arrive at the lowest possible rate, which is 999. An analysis released to Bloomberg News by the campaign claimed that the rate for each of the three taxes could in fact be as low as 7.3%, but poverty grants which Kane described as a lower rate in targeted empowerment zones necessitated a national rate of 9%. Paul Krugman criticized the plan, saying it shifts much of the current tax burden from the rich to the poor. Arthur Laffer, Lawrence Kudlow, The Club for Growth, and Congressman Paul Ryan spoke favorably of the plan. On October 21, Kane told a crowd in Detroit that the plan would be 909 for the poor, saying that if you are at or below the poverty level, then you don't pay that middle nine on your income. Kane's 999 plan attracted skepticism from his fellow candidates at numerous Republican debates. Chapter 3 Section 6 Subsection 4 Sexual Harassment Allegations and End of Campaign In late October 2011, Politico reported that Kane had been accused by two women of sexual harassment and misconduct, during his time as CEO of the National Restaurant Association in the late 1990s. Two other women made additional harassment accusations later on. Kane acknowledged that the restaurant organization made financial settlements to the complainants. Two of the four women came forward publicly, Sharon Bialik and Karen Crowshaw. On November 28, 2011, Kane asserted that a woman named Ginger White claimed to have had an affair with him and that the allegation was not true. In an interview with White, which aired on the same day, she stated that the affair lasted 13 years and ended right before Kane announced his presidential campaign. On November 30, 2011, Kane denounced the allegations of sexual harassment and adultery at an event in Dayton, Ohio. On December 3, 2011, Kane suspended his campaign. The sexual harassment claims were widely considered responsible for the sharp drop in his poll numbers. According to a Pew Research Center report on December 21, 2011, Kane was the most covered candidate among the Republicans during that year. Chapter 3 Section 7, Kane's Solutions Revolution On January 4, 2012, Kane announced the Kane's Solutions Revolution. Kane's stated goal was to get commitments from members of Congress to support the 999 plan before the 2012 elections. Kane stated that he started a new movement because the biggest comment I got when I ended my candidacy was to keep 999 alive. That's what this is about, and I'm going to keep it alive with what I'm calling Kane's Solutions Revolution. In order to promote this movement, Kane employed both a bus tour and a new website. New York Magazine stated, 
it's Kane's earnest effort to keep 999 alive and focus on solutions. On January 20, 2012, Kane spoke at Stephen Colbert's Rock Me Like a Herman Kane, South Kane Olina primary rally. The Huffington Post reported the crowd size was between 3,000 and 5,000 people. It was described at the time as the largest campaign rally so far during this GOP presidential primary season. Chapter 3 Section 8 State of the Union Response For President Barack Obama's 2012 State of the Union Address, the Tea Party Express chose Kane to give its second annual response. After Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels gave the official GOP response, Kane delivered his speech at the National Press Club. The speech was streamed live on the Tea Party Express website. Kane referred to Obama's address as a hodgepodge of liberal ideas, adding that there were no big ideas that would impact job growth and no big ideas that would stimulate economic growth in this country. Chapter 3 Section 9 Call for a Third Party Although Mitt Romney was endorsed by Kane on May 15, 2012, he would eventually lose the general election to President Obama. Kane then told Brian Fisher that the Republican Party no longer represented the interests of conservatives in the United States and that it did not have the ability to rebrand itself. He asserted that a legitimate third party would be needed to replace it. Chapter 4 Personal Life Kane married Gloria Etchison of Atlanta, soon after her graduation from Morris Brown College in 1968. The couple had two children, Melanie and Vincent and four grandchildren. Kane served as an associate minister at the Antioch Baptist Church North in Atlanta, which he joined at the age of 10. The church is part of the National Baptist Convention and is politically liberal and theologically conservative. The church's senior pastor, Rev. Cameron M. Alexander, did not share Kane's political philosophy. Disclosures filed during Kane's 2011 campaign categorized his wealth at that time as being between $2.90 and $6.6 million, with Kane's combined income for both 2010 and 2011 being between $1.10 and $2.1 million. Chapter 4 Section 1 Health and Death In 2006, Kane was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer metastases to his liver, and a 30% chance of survival. After he underwent surgery and chemotherapy, the cancer was reported to be in remission. Kane opposed masking mandates during the COVID-19 pandemic. He attended the 2020 Trump Tulsa rally on June 20, and was photographed not wearing a face mask in a crowd who also were not wearing masks. On June 29, Kane tested positive for COVID-19 during the COVID-19 pandemic in Georgia, and was admitted to an Atlanta-area hospital two days later. On July 2, Kane's staff said there was no way of knowing for sure how or where he contracted the disease. Dan Calabrese, the editor of Kane's website, said, I realize people will speculate about the Tulsa rally, but Herman did a lot of traveling week, including to Arizona where cases spiking. After four weeks of hospitalization, Kane died from COVID-19 complications on July 30, 2020, at the age of 74.